Okay, so this is what we do at home for our workout exercise on Tuesday mornings. We have another one on Saturday. I'm going to show you, and I've been asked about what we do for our exercise. I've covered high intensity training. I hope I've drilled home why it's essential for us and why it should be essential for you. And now I'm just going to progress on exactly what we do on our week to week. This is something we take pretty seriously and we're not gym rats, but we do believe physical exercise is necessary. It clearly has transformed both our lives, bringing us back to good health from where we were less than a decade ago. Okay, so here we go. It's short and sweet. All right, so Tuesday morning, our, our high intensity interval training at home and why we do it. So what is HIIT? New research finds that workout routines with short bursts of intensity. We saw that with the HIT as well. Short bursts of intensity followed by short periods of rest have a positive effect on brain's neuroplasticity brain growth, or keeping your brain vital. So neuroplasticity is a phenomenon that's referred to as a brain's ability to adapt to change by altering its functions and structural properties. So here's what we actually follow. So I don't want to be stealing anybody's information. This is fitness blenders, what you're going to be looking at today. And then uh, Funk Roberts is brief abs. So we're going to, on another day, we're going to go longer with Funk Roberts and uh, Fitness Blender also has some interesting things, but this is what we did on Tuesday morning. Okay, so we're gonna start with Fitness Blender, total time, 15 minutes, not much. Workout structure, it's uh, Tabata style, which is 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. A groups of exercises, three sets per group. So you go one exercise, do that three times, 20 seconds, 10 seconds off, 20 seconds, 10 seconds off, and you go through the list and you'll see that. Uh, there's no equipment and there's no warm up and there's no cool down, but it can be as strenuous as you want to make it. So the sequence is mountain climbers, windshield wipers, burpees, jumping lunges, jackknife crunches, back bow crossovers, seal pushups, and supine pushups. So I'm gonna we're gonna end this video with exactly us doing that with Funk Roberts, which is a six minute ad pack. It's pretty intense. It's 40 seconds of work followed by 20 seconds of rest. And what his sequence is, slight crunches, reverse crunches, flutter kicks, Russian twists, half windshield wipers, and ab bicycles. So we get through this pretty much the whole thing in 20 minutes. Uh, call it 25, you gotta change the videos, right? How to measure intensity of exercise. That's really important, and here's what I do. I've been wearing a CGM intermittent for the last three or four years. I do believe them, believe in them. I don't really need to do that that much anymore. But what it helped me know is that when I really push myself, so I first did it for a high intensity training session and, and I could see looking at my, my glucose, my glucose, because I'm in general ketosis most of the time on a, a protein sparing modified fast kind of regime. So it's unusual for me to have elevated glucose, but when it happens, it's because of the intensity of the exercise that I'm doing. So here's what HIT looks like on the glucometer readout. It shows the intensity of the workout. Okay, so here I'm gonna show you, I've done, I've done different exercises. Here's cardio on an elliptical for about 45 minutes. It was pretty much flat. There really wasn't any moment of intensity. It was long, it was hard, and I was tired, but there wasn't any moment of intensity. And I took my readings a number of times just to verify it. My average heartbeat was 130 to 140. So then I went on to the high intensity interval training versus slow high intensity training, which I've showed you about in past videos. And you can see how there still is a pretty big difference. So we have a number of varieties of HIIT. One was a kettlebell routine when I happened to be wearing this. And so, yeah, it absolutely spiked my glucose, but it didn't spike my glucose as much as the high intensity training session did that you've seen about. That was far higher, but you can see the exercise you do and that intensity is important. Short bursts of high intensity. Short bursts of high intensity is key here. So. If all you're capable of is doing is long, slow walks outside around your house, then that's fine. But if you're capable of more, I'm gonna encourage you to do more, okay? So what is the benefit of short bouts of metabolic intensity? To create short pulses, the objective is to create short pulses of growth hormone. If you could push it with HIT, high intensity training, the next 48 hours, if I showed you before, you get this trajectory of elevated 
protein muscle synthesis. And that is so important to have elevated protein muscle synthesis, or actually greater than breakdown. So you're not breaking down. As people get older, past 25, it ends up being your default mode of sitting on the sofa or inactivity is you break down more muscle. You will atrophy. You will develop sarcopenia. And it's not just about muscle mass. It's about autoimmune your immune system in general. And there's all sorts of research correlating muscle mass with your immune function. So it's not just your biceps you're looking at or your abs, whatever the part of the body is that you want to get stronger with. It's about your immune system, but we can visually see our muscles. So it's, it's kind of an easy thing. I'm getting stronger. I, I like what I look. Well, you're, you're also tweaking your immune system. You're also tweaking your brain more than tweaking your brain. But anyway, so your, your intensity, the reason you want short bouts of intensity is to have your provoking growth hormone, which is IGF as that we measure. And we've looked at that in labs in the past. Okay, see previous videos on growth hormone and IGF naturally created. So the objective is, if you really wanna just paraphrase it, this is the fastest way to grow young or grow young fast. Bursts of intensity help build your muscles and your mind. Why we do this? High intensity training two times a week. Tuesdays and Saturdays definitely, sometimes also Thursdays, depending on how we feel. And HIT, we do it on Monday and Wednesday. And later I'll show you what we do on Wednesday, which is at the gym. And it's, it's not together, it's a free weight, weight day. But when you look at dementia or Alzheimer's, which is the majority of the cases of dementia, or you look at sarcopenia, look at what do they have in common? They have low growth hormone. They have low IGF. That's not what you want. And you have the ability to maintain, I don't mean as a straight line, I mean to do intensity and then to rest. Do intensity and then to rest. Do intensity and then to rest. This will change all that and you really need to incorporate it. You have the power to address this. Acetylcholine is another factor, but without bouts of high intensity, your acetylcholine is still gonna be low. Clearly it depends on other factors and we'll go into that on another day for another video. So let's do this, okay? Nice and quick, draw those feet in. When one comes in, the other one pumps, pumps right back out. So it's a nice quick motion, basically trying to bring those feet up underneath you as far as you can. Barely let that foot touch or don't let it touch at all before you kick it right back out. Arms up nice and wide. You're gonna drop those legs off to the side as far as it's comfortable. And right back up again. Same thing over the other side. You only go as far as you can control, keeping those shoulders on the ground. Try to keep those legs as straight as you can. Drop those feet, give a little bit of a break. And do another round of those. I'm gonna switch positions so you can see what I'm doing a little better. Legs straight up, off to the side, as far as you can go, as far as you can control. Keep those shoulders down, same thing the other side. Make sure you keep those lungs open, don't hold your breath. What are you doing? And start them up. Nice high jump at the top if you want the harder version. Otherwise, you can just come up to a full extension. Try to move as quickly as you can. If you can't keep up with me, that's fine. If you can go faster than me, that's great. All right, and switch. Nice quick pop. Start getting tired. You can switch into an alternating lunge. Either reverse or forward, whatever you prefer. Crunch it up, up toward those toes. Right back down to full extension, trying to let those arms or feet touch. Right back up again, trying to keep those legs as straight as you can, those arms as straight as you can. And then crunching up towards those toes as high as is possible. Everyone's going to have a little bit different range of motion, so don't worry about it. Just try to go as high as you can. Back across to the left. Try to keep those lungs open. Try not to hold your breath. You're going to want to. But try to keep them open as best you can. Back up. All right, go ahead and start them. 
Scoop it down, press it up, and back up. Scoop down, press it up, and back up. Just keep it going. Body weight exercise, start them up for that upper back, for those rhomboids. It's really hard to hit them otherwise. Push into those elbows, lift that chest up off the ground. And relax, the first one down, you got two more to go. Excuse me, pop them out and back in, start them up. And this is the harder version. If you start getting too tired doing this, then you can walk those feet in and out. Otherwise, try to hop them the whole time. We're doing it for a full minute. So that's our first 20 seconds down. Still using that Tabata timer, so the beeping is going to be a little bit off on this one. Alright, that's 30 seconds, so that's halfway through. Just keep those feet moving. Keep those hips low. Lungs open, don't hold your breath. And let that relax. The slight crunches first, we're just bringing our shoulders off the ground. Now we're working the upper abs here. So in order for you really to feel those upper abs doing the work, you really need to ensure that the small of your back, right below here, is right touching the ground the entire time. Okay, so a little bit of a pelvic tilt. Exhale on the way up and down, the way down. Hold it for a second. So we're not going too far up. It's just a slight crunch, it's like a McGill crunch. Stuart McGill, Dr. Stuart McGill. We want to save our neck here, so we don't want to be pulling. We just want our head up, exhaling on the way up, inhaling the way down. Perfect. And we're just going to roll up. Good. But making sure the lower small part of your back, the, your pelvic, your, uh, you have that tilt going the whole time. And then you'll feel this in the lower abs doing the work. Control your, uh, your legs on the way down. Don't let them fall. Good. You really feel it when you... Keep that lower part of your abs to the ground. I'm oh, sorry, lower part of your back on the ground. <sighs> Exhale on the way up and the other way down. Trying to bring the belly button right toward your chest. Good. Wow. Want to make sure the small of your back, so we're going to do a little bit of a tilt, is on the ground. <sighs> Feeling this in the entire ab <laughs> region, actually. <sighs> Keep those toes pointed. Good. Keep your head off the ground. Remember, keep the small of your back right plastered on the ground. Keep going. Oh, oh. You can feel that right in your abs right now. Oh, that was rough. This is a good rotational movement. Also hits the obliques. I'm doing it with my feet off the ground, but as I get tired, I still want to keep moving so I can put my feet on the ground. Good. Rotate. Try to get the back part of your hand touching the ground. Oh, ah. Definitely feeling this. Let's push. Push through. Head up. Breathing. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Oh, good work. Good work. Okay. We're doing knees opposite elbow. You find that your hips hurt, that means your hip flexors are doing most of the work, which is not what we want. Let's go rotate. So now we're still rotating, but we're kicking straight out. Good. Kick, kick, exhale, exhale, rotate, rotate. Keep the lower part of the back on the ground. See that if you have to rest, you try to rest for just a couple seconds and then keep going. Good. All right, one last exercise. Your knees a 90 degree angle, but do not let the legs touch the ground. Force those 
the core, get tight, force those obliques to do the work. Good. Drop down, exhale on the way up. Good. Control the abs, control the legs going down. Don't just let them fall. Control them down, pull them back up. Control them down, pull them back up. Good. Down, back up. Good work, guys. Good work. There you have it. There you have it. Got this here. So there you have it. So this is our morning workout on Tuesdays, Thursdays, sometimes Saturdays, always. She's always Tuesdays and Saturdays. We have another video we do on the Saturday or Thursday, but it's pretty tiring. Um, it's better than nothing, and um, it gets it out of the way, and I can go back to work. Any comment? No, I'm too tired. So if this is something that you're interested in, that is a topic that I obviously go deeper in, in terms of labs, in terms of how to do it, in terms of why you would want to do it, various topics, as you've seen that I've done in the past, then please let me know below in a comment. Till then.